If you're newer to Blender or have never used it before, you'll find that most people will suggest to you to not start with a car or a vehicle because they're complicated. They're complex objects. And generally, when learning a new skill, you start with something simple and work your way up to the more complex projects. However, you may just want to dive in and start with a car. My first project was a car, actually. I made um, made I made this. You know, it's really good. I didn't know what I was doing, so I'm gonna show you how to not make this because it's bad and it was done very very wrong. Um, it looked good in edit mode, so I thought I knew what I was doing, but that was what it looked like. So my goal here is to show you. Uh, my goal is to help you know what you're doing correctly we're gonna be making something more along the lines of this this isn't the exact vehicle that we're going to be making but it's more representative of what our, our goal is what we're aiming for with this tutorial this is going to be a beginner tutorial in the sense that it starts off with the basics going over core concepts of 3d modeling such as topology we're also going to be talking about a lot of the different uh, tools blender offers and the shortcuts for those in order to make this an efficient process but this is not going to be a beginner tutorial in the sense that we're diving right in it's not going to be easy like I said cars are complicated objects the entire workflow and process of making the vehicle will be explained, but this this learning style isn't for everyone. So, just a, wor a warning. Learning a new skill is difficult and it takes patience. We're going to be modeling a Dodge Challenger in this course, and I encourage you to follow along in making that specific vehicle. By the end of the course though, not only will you have your own Dodge Challenger 3D model, but you also have the skills to model any other vehicle or whatever you want. You're going to know how to 3D model. So before we jump into modeling our vehicle, I wanted to get acquainted with the user interface of Blender. If you've downloaded it and open it, you can download it at the blender.org. I'll put the link in the description. But uh, this is the most recent release of Blender. You know, we get this nice little splash screen. We can just click outside of it anywhere, and that'll close that. And there's a lot of different stuff here. Bunch of windows with a lot of tabs, buttons, and panels. So we'll just take a few moments to get acquainted with this. This big screen here is our 3D view. This may seem kind of obvious, but 3D view is where we do most of our 3D work. Uh, it's how we navigate our scene, we, how we edit objects in 3D, um, just navigate around and stuff. It's where we do most of our 3D work. This editor on the top right is our outliner, which is basically just a list of all the objects we have within our 3D view. Here you see a cube camera and a lamp that's what those are but we'll go in more depth about the different object types in blender later uh, this also displays different relations between objects um, we don't have any right now so that's fine right beneath the outliner is the properties tab there are a lot of different properties each of these buttons up here on top are a different tab for different types of properties. We're not going to look at any of them now, but as they come up within the tutorial, we'll talk about them. There are a lot of properties. On the bottom here is our timeline, which is how we um, play back our animations. We're not going to be doing anything animated in this tutorial, so you might wonder how can we close it? We don't really need it, and it's just kind of taking up space, and 
clutters up our view. In the corner of each of these editors are some diagonal lines. And if we grab the one um, down here, bottom left, of our 3D view, and click and drag that, we get some arrows. And if we just hold it over, bring it over our uh, timeline, we can let go and it'll close that. It, it may take some getting used to as most programs just there's an X and that's how you close it. So if play around with that and if you mess something up, file, load factory settings, it'll just bring everything back if things get kind of crazy. I'm just going to close that again. Each of these editors can be swapped out for, if we click this drop down menu, there's a lots of different other types of editors. We're not going to look at any of them now, but um, they'll come up later in the tutorial. However, these are the three main editors that we need for 3D modeling. So we'll keep these here for the time being. Each editor has its own components. This uh, toolbar to the left is part of our 3D view, and we can toggle that using T. The toolbar has a bunch of different tabs on it that contain um, different tools that we can use within our 3D view. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about navigating this 3D view. If you hold in your middle, middle mouse wheel, we pivot around the scene. That's how we rotate our view. If we scroll with our mouse wheel, we can zoom in and out. And if you hold shift and your middle mouse wheel, uh, you can pan. So those are just a couple different ways we can navigate around our scene. Right now you can see this cube here is uh, outlined in orange. That means something is selected. In most programs, I believe uh, left click is select and Blender is right click. So that might take some getting used to, but outlined objects or selected objects are outlined in orange. And we right click to do that. When an object is selected, we get this uh, these three arrows, which represent our different axes. If we take a look here at the bottom left corner of our 3D view, we can see the green represents our Y axis, the red represents our X axis, and uh, Z is our the blue is our Z axis axis or I don't know what am I saying? Uh, and in our 3D view, we can just grab these arrows and move them around to move objects. You can see here this little red and white dotted circle. That is called our 3D cursor. Uh, it doesn't have too many uses, but um, we can position that using left click. We'll probably be using that later. And then if you click Shift C, it just recenters it at the zero point of all the axes, the origin of our scene. There are a lot of different other buttons here. Um, we're not going to go over them now. Uh, that'd take forever. And frankly, not a lot of them are used there. Blender is a heavily, uh, there's a lot of shortcuts in Blender, which is another sort of bump in learning it. But uh, we'll, we'll be talking about those in the next part, in, where we're, we're going to be setting up a blueprint. Um, so we have built-in reference to our 3D view so we know exactly what we're making. So uh, hopefully this was helpful in getting acquainted with Blender's user interface and I look forward to seeing you in the next part. Okay, bye.